Today, France unveils its belt tightening budget amid serious financial pressure. The EU has another showdown with Hungary's Viktor Orban, and Florida is battered by Hurricane Milton. From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Thursday, the 10th of October, 2024. French Prime Minister Michel Barnier has unveiled his proposed 2025 budget today, beginning what will likely be a painful parliamentary fight. While at time of writing the exact budget details have not been published, Barnier plans to implement 60 billion euros worth of spending cuts and tax hikes to tackle what he called the country's colossal debt. There's significant pressure on Barnier from financial markets and the European Union to reduce France's public deficit, which this year sits at 6.1% of GDP, well above the EU's 3% limit. Barnier's government has pledged to reduce the deficit to 5% next year and 3% by 2029. To raise revenue, Barnier has pledged to implement time-limited tax hikes on France's big businesses and wealthiest households. He's also expected to raise taxes on heavily polluting vehicles, and he could enact measures to tax share buybacks and raise more from levies on energy companies. The planned tax increases are meant to raise some 20 billion euros, meaning a further 40 billion are supposed to be found by making cuts. Half of this will reportedly come from capping state ministry budgets, while the social security system and local authorities will shoulder the rest. Among the possible plans that are likely to cause political backlash is the postponing of a pension increase by six months to save 4 billion euros. The biggest challenge for Barnier, who was appointed Prime Minister by President Emmanuel Macron last month, is that he must get his budget through a deeply fractured National Assembly, which is split into three ideologically opposing blocs – left, centre and right – none of which have a majority. The New Popular Front, an alliance of four parties from the far to centre-left which came first in the snap elections earlier this year, is outright opposed to Barnier's government, and has already mounted a failed attempt to topple it with a no-confidence vote. The bigger threat to Barnier is Marine Le Pen's far-right national rally, which has tolerated his government so far, opting not to join the left's no-confidence vote, but which has stated its willingness to bring him down based on his actions and policies. Le Pen has already described the potential pension increase delay as theft. But Barnier cannot even entirely rely on support from his own minority government, which comprises Macron's centrist alliance and Barnier's own right-wing Republicans. He may face something of a rebellion from Macronist lawmakers who oppose Barnier's plans to reverse Macron-era tax cuts and impose tax hikes on big businesses and the wealthy. If it proves impossible to get a budget through the National Assembly, which is a real possibility given the parliamentary arithmetic, Barnier will likely resort to using Article 49.3 of the Constitution, which allows him to force it through without a vote. This will, however, leave him open to a no-confidence vote that could topple him and his government if opposition parties band together in favour. This would throw France into serious uncertainty, as it only has until the end of the year to adopt a budget. There's more on the way, but remember to subscribe and ring the bell for more daily briefing on Monday. Plus, if you want to support the channel like JMPH, then consider joining the TLDR Daily Membership Program for just one ninety nine. In other European news, Ursula von der Leyen slammed Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban following his speech to the European Parliament yesterday. Orban came to the Parliament in Brussels to set out the priorities for Hungary's six-month presidency. But this usually routine moment in the calendar became a boisterous session. Following his speech and leading the charge against Orban, von der Leyen criticised the Hungarian leader for cozying up to Vladimir Putin, allowing foreign interference by Russia and China, and letting down the Hungarian people. Von der Leyen said, quote, There are still some who blame this war not on the invader, but on the invaded. Not on Putin's lust for power, but on Ukraine's thirst for freedom. Hungary's visa scheme for Russian nationals was also criticised by von der Leyen for posing a risk to all member states. She also skewered Orban's stance on migration, accusing his government of throwing problems over your neighbour's fence, with the early release of convicted traffickers. Afterwards, lawmakers lined up to take aim at Orban. In response to Orban's curbing of civil rights in Hungary, Green co-leader Terry Reintke declared, You are not welcome here. This is the house of European democracy. Some MEPs also broke into the anti-fascist song of Bella Ciao, forcing the Speaker of the Parliament, Roberta Metzola, to intervene and declare this is not Eurovision. 
In other news, Hurricane Milton has swept across central Florida, whipping up a barrage of tornadoes, destroying homes and leaving more than 3 million homes and businesses without power. The storm made landfall on Wednesday evening around 100 kilometers south of Tampa Bay, which is home to more than 3 million people and which had previously been expected to be right in the path of the storm. Milton made landfall as a Category 3 hurricane, having weakened from its earlier Category 5 status. However, a flash flood emergency was in place for the Tampa Bay area due to significant rainfall. The city of St. Petersburg, for example, received more than 16 inches of rain on Wednesday. Winds of over 100 miles per hour whipped the roof of Tropicana Field, the home of the Tampa Bay Rays baseball team, to shreds, and there have been reports of several crane collapses. Governor Ron DeSantis said the hurricane had spawned at least 19 tornadoes, which caused damage across numerous counties, destroying around 125 homes, mostly mobile homes. Several deaths have been reported, though at the time of writing, the exact number remains uncertain. Milton is the fifth hurricane to make landfall in the US this year, more than from 2021 to 2023 combined, according to CNN. It was the second direct hit on Florida in 12 days, with Hurricane Helene already wreaking havoc in Florida and the southern United States. Moving to the UK now, where the Conservative Party finally whittled down the candidates for their new leader from four to two. The leadership election began in earnest a few weeks after the general election on the 4th of July, in which the Conservatives suffered their worst defeat in their history. In total, six candidates threw their hats in the ring. Former Home Secretary Priti Patel, former Work and Pension Secretary Mel Stride, former Security Minister Tom Tugendhat, former Foreign Secretary James Cleverley, former Immigration Minister Robert Jenrick, and former Housing Secretary Kemi Badenoch. The first two to be eliminated were Patel and Stride, and this week we saw the elimination of Tugendhat and Cleverley. Now, the interesting thing here is that Cleverley had become the favourite in recent weeks, and was way out ahead of all of his competitors in the MP vote on Tuesday. In the vote on Wednesday, he dropped to third, however, and was subsequently eliminated. The only way to really explain this is by assuming that a number of Cleverly voters tactically voted for Jenrick, as they assumed that he would be an easier opponent to face in the party membership vote. This has massively backfired, though, as Cleverly has now been eliminated, and the Conservative membership will now spend October deciding whether they would rather have Jenrick or Badenoch lead the party. If you want to know more about this story, we released a full video on it over on the TLDR News UK channel. And finally, in some uplifting news, Nima Rinji Sherpa, an 18-year-old from Nepal, has made history by breaking the world record for the youngest mountaineer to summit all 14 of Earth's highest peaks, known as the 8000ers. Yesterday morning, he reached the summit of Mount Shishapangna in Tibet, joining an exclusive group of climbers who have conquered these formidable mountains. Nima is determined to reshape the perception of Sherpas, who often work as guides in the Nepal-Tibet region. We're not just guides, we're trailblazers, he asserted, highlighting the potential of Sherpas as athletes and adventurers. Nima comes from a family that operates in Nepal's largest expedition company, and they've voiced immense pride in his achievement. With this record, he surpasses the previous title holder, another Nepali Sherpa climber who completed the challenge at the age of 30. Now, we obviously discussed the UK Conservative leadership election earlier in this episode, and if that's something you enjoyed, you should check out Too Long, the 2024 election special. For those of you who don't know, Too Long is our physical magazine, where every four months we dive deep into stories we care about and you should know about. The next issue, set to be published on December the 1st, will run through every election that's happened in 2024, a year shaped by landmark elections across the globe, from the UK and US to elections in Indonesia, Bangladesh, Mexico, Rwanda, and the biggest democratic exercise in history in India. It's not just elections either. The next issue of Too Long will also discuss the first months of the new Labour administration in the UK, unpack the successes and failures of Biden's administration, ask why Europe feels so leaderless right now, the ongoing conflicts in Ukraine and Israel, and much, much more. You can pre-order your copy now at toolong.news. Better still, you can also subscribe to get 25% off every copy as long as you're a member. And get every copy sent to your front door or inbox. Plus, if you use code 2DAILY, you'll get an additional £2 off your order, which could bring the price down as low as £5.49. The link's in the description, and thank you for your support.